Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, here online I have a saying. Knockouts cause amnesia. I feel that it's important to revisit fights. To go back and look at the action that took place before the knockout. Now, Carl Frampton knocked out Kiko Martinez. It was a TKO in the ninth round of their first meeting. Right? Arguably, it's Frampton's biggest win to date. Frampton, of course, is an unbeaten fighter. But something bothers me with Frampton. I'm a bit of a skeptic on Frampton. Add him to those unbeaten fighters that I like to pick on. Right? Deontay Wilder, Janady Golovkin. Add Carl Frampton's name to that mix. Right? In the rematch, I think the casinos have badly mispriced this one. If you're going to give me a plus 400, if you're going to give me 4-1 to one odds on Kiko Martinez, then that's my pick in this fight. I like Kiko Martinez to avenge his earlier loss to Carl Frampton in the first fight. Right? But I need for people to understand the risk involved. Martinez got stopped in that first fight. Right? This is only for the hardcore gamblers out there, right? We're picking against Carl Frampton, an unbeaten fighter, in his backyard. The fight is going to be in Northern Ireland, right? Let's talk about why. The ninth round, the end of the fight, worked out well for Frampton. But what I want you to do is to go back and look at the sixth round the seventh round, the eighth round of their first fight. I've posted the fight in my favorites folder on my YouTube channel page. Right? In my opinion, Martinez takes over the fight in those rounds. In other words, this is that rare fight where the guy who lost the first fight actually had taken it over. I know I'm going to get a lot of blowback here. And please, leave the blowback in the comment section to this video. But I thought after Frampton looked promising early, I thought Martinez swung the fight. I thought Frampton was falling apart. There are parts of Frampton's game I didn't like. For example, I think there's a gap here on footwork. I think Kiko Martinez has the much better feet. I think Frampton, who was on his back foot while Martinez was on his front foot in the rounds I've mentioned, I thought Frampton would back away and would have his hands low. Now I'll agree, Martinez hasn't shown an ability to leap at you and hit you during moments like that, right? But just know there are times where Frampton, quite frankly, is naked in the ring, right? Frampton seems to just back away from engagements and then just walk around the ring. If Martinez were a little bit faster afoot, his pressure would break Frampton. Let me say this, too. You know, Frampton really is, in my opinion, too stiff-legged. I think he leans too heavily on his front foot. I think Martinez, the guy who lost the first fight, has the better balance. I believe there are adjustments that Martinez can make in this fight. Right? The first adjustment. And keep in mind, for portions of that first fight, Martinez is the one hunting 
Frampton. Right, the first adjustment Martinez, I believe, can make to greatly increase his chances of winning would be to figure out how to cut off the ring a little bit better. Right, he's chasing Frampton around the ring. Frampton is backing away and he's not artistic in doing it. Right, Martinez needs to figure out the angle so as he gets Frampton to back away, he corners Frampton. Right, that's what he needs to do. Maybe he needs to look at the Medina Jalen Love fight. Right, with Frampton backing up so much, and in my opinion, so recklessly. I was surprised that Martinez didn't do a better job of cornering him. If he corners Frampton, I think he cracks Frampton. Right, let me also say this. As I said, I believe Frampton has a problem with balance. Now, it's interesting. Don't confuse this with being front foot heavy. I'm not saying Frampton's coming forward too much. That's different. I'm saying to get power, Frampton likes to lean on his front leg. Now, that's important because you can tell by Frampton's feet, his legs, when he's going to throw power punches. Right? His legs are all over the place. But the one constant is, it's when he leans on that front leg that he's able to throw power punches. In my opinion, that's a bad tell. Right? I hope Martinez is fully prepared to look at Frampton's front leg. Since he's an orthodox dance, it's going to be his left leg. Right? Understand if Frampton doesn't have that leg planted, he can't throw power shots. So Martinez has to plan his entry point a little bit better. Right? Just understand, though, that as Frampton moves around the ring, his construct, his boxing construct, starts to fall apart then as he gets a little bit tired into the fight, it's noticeable. That's why you see Martinez have success in the rounds preceding the TKO. Right? Don't let the ninth round blind you to the sixth and seventh rounds. Right? Look at those rounds, what you're going to see is a very competitive fight. Very competitive. Right? This is not the kind of matchup that should warrant either guy being a 4-1 to underdog. And as you look at it, you're going to notice a few things. Right? Martinez is better at hiding his upper body, right? He bends at the waist in such a way that he's better at hiding his upper body, right? Frampton is the harder puncher. Frampton has the ability to throw punches from farther away with more power. I'll give him that, right? The problem, though, is, in my opinion, you know when those punches are coming. And in my opinion, his defense starts to fall apart. Let me say this, another adjustment Martinez can make. Right? If you're up on Frampton and you're engaging, then Frampton backs away. At that moment, you know he's going to be naked. I hope Martinez has practice that last punch after an engagement. In other words, you're up on Frampton, he starts to back away, you need to lean in right there. Right? Right there. Let me say this, too. 
there are times where Martinez looks like he's having a good round. Since he's on his front foot and Frampton's on his back foot, Martinez needs to figure it out where if he's winning the round and we get to the last 15 seconds of the round, why continue to pursue Frampton? You've banked the round. If Frampton is scurrying away, let him scurry away. On a round you've already banked. Right? I believe Martinez has to moderate his front foot. In other words, you know, he's on the front foot, he's winning the exchange. Frampton then backs away. Martinez shouldn't chase Frampton all over the ring. He he should pick his spots. In fact, if he has showmanship in him, at times when Frampton in front of his home crowd is backing away recklessly, right? If Frampton backs away and Martinez isn't close enough to capitalize on Frampton's lackadaisical defense. Look at his hands when he backs away. As he backs away, right? If if Frampton's too far away, then why doesn't Martinez then motion to Frampton to come fight him? Nothing's more embarrassing for a fighter in front of his home crowd. Right? The idea that you're moving and I understand Frampton's moving for tactical reasons. I understand it. But all I'm saying is just reinforce with the judges that you're here to fight. You're the one pushing the action. Take a look at the first round of the first fight. You're going to see Martinez is the guy coming forward. And no one's really that impressed by it. They should have been. He has Carl Frampton in his backyard on his back foot. Right? So let me just say this. I thought the first fight was razor close. I thought even the ninth round was a competitive round until Frampton drops the bomb. The fight should have been stopped. Martinez was in no shape to continue. Right? But when you have a close fight decided by a knockout that isn't the result of the knockout puncher's increasing dominance, when it's the opposite, Frampton jumps out to a lead, then Martinez whittles away that lead, actually starts to dominate. You still had rounds left for Martinez to win, to win the fight on the scorecards. And then he gets hit with the bomb. How do I know Martinez is not going to pick up where he left off? In rematches, go back to the prior fight and look at who had the momentum when that fight ended. Right? Swift Martinez just focuses on below the waist, figures out spatial distance, and cuts off the ring a little bit better. Right? He already knows that Frampton's defense is slowly going to fall apart as he backs away as the fight continues. Right? He, he already knows. The dynamic's going to be he's on his front foot, Frampton is on his back foot. Revisit the film. Look at Frampton's feet. You're going to notice Frampton is just moving his feet, moving his legs a lot more than Kiko Martinez. There are times where I don't think, based on the feet, that Frampton's in a position to throw a punch back. Kiko Martinez needs to cause that to happen more often. Put another way, Martinez always looks ready to throw punches. Frampton does not. Understand, too, 
Martinez has much more experience than Frampton. He has many more fights than Frampton. Look at the last two guys Martinez beat. Jeffrey Mathabula, who gave Nanito Denier all he could handle and who has a much better jab than Frampton has. And Hazumi Hasegawa, a former champion. Right? It shows. The experience gap shows in the ring below the waist. Right? So if you're going to give me 4-1 to one on Kiko Martinez in this fight, I'm going to take Martinez. If I had to hedge the play, the hedge would be Frampton by KO. Now just understand that runs contrary to common sense. I'll admit it. Right? In boxing orthodoxy. Because the argument would be, how could anyone beat Frampton by decision in Ireland? My response to that is by looking at his legs and by timing punches for when he first starts to back up when he drops his hands. Right? I think that creates an opening for Martinez. Let me say this too. Martinez is the shorter fighter. When he bends over, he knows Frampton's trying to hit him on the side of the head. Frampton likes to throw shots from the outside. Martinez needs to have his hands up. What he needs to do is make a deal with the devil, and I know this is going to sound terrible. But what he needs to do is he needs to favor his head over his body. Right? Let Frampton throw punches toward your body. Just don't allow him to hit you in the head. Right? The logic being Frampton, who's not defensively gifted, in throwing body punches is going to make himself even more vulnerable to counters up top. Right? Also, as the shorter fighter. It seems to me that if Martinez focuses on defending the sides of his head, if he crouches low enough, that elbow should block a decent percentage of the hooks to the body. Anyway, put me among those who believes Kiko Martinez is a live underdog here. The play I'm recommending is Martinez to win the fight at 4-1. to one. Right? He's a 4-1 to one underdog. He's a too big an underdog. Hedged with Frampton by KO. Understand, if Frampton comes out and closes the show like he did last time, you're protected with the hedge. But if Frampton comes out and then gets methodically outboxed over the second half of the fight again, and if Martinez is able to make some basic adjustments, the idea of cutting off the ring, he should be able to, since Frampton likes to move back and have a distance between him and his opponent. Right? Frampton doesn't just take a step back, he takes several steps back. If Martinez can just figure out the spacing, he could win this fight, folks, by a few rounds. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.